Maybe. Okay. Next up to the stage. Uh, very funny man. I love watching this guy work. His name is David C. Wingfield. Welcome to it. As the years go on, it gets harder and harder to find people in Richmond who have actually lived here their whole lives. Uh, this next person has lived here his whole life. He's one of my good friends. He's hilarious. I love this guy. His name is Jesse Jarvis. Welcome to the stage. Ah, uh, yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> how you doing, guys? Cafe DM. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Give yourself a round of applause. All of that jasmine taz. Yeah. High energy, motherfucker. Yeah. I um, I got my wallet stolen a couple weeks ago. Uh, I don't know if that's happened to you before, but uh, let me let me break it down. It's it's uh, it's a like it's it's very scary. It's a lot like having a broken condom, you know? You're like. Oh no, that's not a good thing. I'm kind of scared about what's going to happen. I'm not ready to give up all my money yet. <laughs> Shit. And like the cops were no help either. They were just like, well, you know, somebody might steal your identity. They buy it, and now they're Jesse Jarvis. You know, like they purchase your identity. Now they're Jesse Jarvis. But like I was thinking, it could even be a girl though. You know, my name's Jesse. Some girl purchases my identity. But then I'm talking to the cops, and I'm like, well, Mr. Jarvis, we pulled up your credit report, and it uh, looks like you purchased scented candles, and it looks like uh, there was a purchase on your credit for scented candles and body lotions on the second. So I think we got it. We got the girl who stole your identity. I'm like, all right, that's fine, officer and all, but um, my wallet was stolen on the third, so could we, like, forget we ever had this conversation, <laughs> please? I greatly appreciate that. But then, like, I just imagine like somebody else purchasing my identity. This guy Jesse Jarvis. I go home for dinner in my mom's house or something. The other Jesse Jarvis is sitting at the dinner table. I'm like, hey, asshole, that's my meatloaf. Stop that. And my mom's like, who are you? I'm just like, I'm your son. Yeah, all right. Listen, I know you're my son, but uh, this Jesse Jarvis is a lawyer now, and uh, he's going to take care of me when I retire. So. Um, <laughs> I know this is hard, but I think we should go our separate ways. We should go our separate ways. I think you should move on and start seeing other parents. Think of that. I like that bit. <laughs> it fucking happened. Truth bomb, guys. Uh, I saw. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I saw. I saw this commercial the other day. It was for an antidepressant called Vyvanse. I think that's what it's called. And uh, it was your standard commercial for an antidepressant. It's filmed in black and white. Some, like, sad girl staring at an empty seesaw realizing her friend's never going to show up. Like, some guy staring through a rainy window while Tom Waits plays, you know? Just your, your standard antidepressant commercial. But it was the side effects that got me. One of the side effects said, Vyvanse may cause sudden death. Wait, that's kind of the opposite, right? No, wait, that's definitely the opposite. That's definitely the opposite of what they're supposed to do. It's like, hey, uh, while you go in the sun, put on this SPF 30, you know, to protect yourself from the sun, but just be aware, it may cause skin cancer, which may cause sudden death. Uh, like, I just, I, like, what gets me about that is just how, just, like, I, so I guess you take this antidepressant, and uh, if you're, like, so if you want to kill yourself, but you don't want all the judginess that comes along with suicide, fucking take this pill, man, because it will fuck your shit up, son. Damn. <laughs> I know Chick-fil-A's been in the news lately. Like, whatever. Facebook solves that stuff. Nothing. Who gives a shit? Whatever. But, uh, I, like, I don't... The people who support Chick-fil-A, I don't know it's that they're against gay marriage, or it's like they just really enjoy eating shitty food. Uh... And I said this because, and some people be like, "No, man, Chick Fil A is awesome." No, it's not. It's a soggy piece of meat served between two sweaty buns. It sounds pretty gay. That mango milkshake isn't helping their cause either. Uh, <laughs> it's not. Like seriously, go there, and go to Chick Fil A sometime and buy a sandwich. They serve in that little sweaty pocket sleeve thing. You know, it's like some jackass just shoved a sandwich into his pants. He's like. Pulls out, he's like, hey, you want to buy this? I know it's expensive, but uh, I'm not going to eat it, so you can just, like, buy it. Stop gay marriage and stuff. Uh, stop gay marriage by eating something that just came out of my pants. You can do that. 
That's what fast food does. They try. They just try to like force this terrible stuff on you and just convince you that it's awesome. Like you know, they just like scrape up the same disgusting food into a flatbread, throw avocados in, and they're like, ah, you see what we did there? You see? That's fancy food now. Yeah, that fancy food looks like fancy feast. That's wrong species, bro. Know your marketing. I'm gonna, uh, I'll leave you guys on this because I just feel like doing it and you can't fire me. Uh, <laughs> I, did anybody here grow up playing Dungeons and Dragons or Magic the Gathering? Yeah? yeah. I didn't. But <laughs> Wait, I want to say this to you guys that clap. I'm fucking jealous of you guys. And here's why. Because uh, you can speak in this weird, obscure language I've never heard of before, but it sounds kind of cool, you know? Like, I was at a party, and I saw these two guys talking, and then <laughs> one guy was just saying to the other, hey, man, I saw you talking to that chick, how'd it go? And the other guy was like, well, with my level 7 agility, I just let my trisector goblin potion do the talking. <laughs> yeah, with my relic emperor sword, how could she say no, you know? And then the other guy was like, well, dude, if you take her out, make sure you use your anti gromian elixir so that way you don't catch a case of the rats. Trust me, dude, that shit will take over your body like locust willows after an elf storm. You just gotta be careful, buddy. <laughs> and I have no idea what they're talking about. It's like, yeah, man, fucking Yu-Gi-Oh is crazy as shit. <laughs> anyway, Captain Dan, thank you for your time. I love you guys. Tip Tony a lot of money. Yes, tip Tony a lot of money and put one of those dollars in clay shirts. <laughs> Jesse Jones, everybody, give it up for him again. All right, coming up the stage, this man, he runs Cafe Day, he runs us over Mikey, puts us on so that we can all laugh, enjoy each other's company. Give it up for him. His name is Bill Metzger. Give it up for him! Thank you. Hello. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I was, when I came in today uh, to set up for the show, I was really disappointed that uh, Cafe Diem painted over the bathroom walls here. Uh, hey, it's cool. They put on the top half, it's split. I don't know if it's this way in the girls' restroom, but on the top, it's all they like painted it with chalk paint so you could write on it, which is great because some of the best graffiti uh, bathroom graffiti I've ever seen is in the men's room here. Uh, there was a sentence written until they painted it uh, that was amazing, and it was, if you wait long enough, I will appear and suck your dick, bro. <laughs> I have to start right in the middle of that sentence with the word appear because it makes it sound like some kind of fucked up urban legend. It's like, if you, if you go to Cafe Diem at midnight and wait for long enough, a ghost will come along and suck on your penis. <laughs> so for the rest of this joke, let's assume it's a ghost that comes and sucks you off. <laughs> First of all, he had to write on the wall that that's what you do. He was like, how do I drum up business? No one knows about the, the dick-sucking curse. I need to promote my curse. <laughs> He's two steps. Now that you've painted this, I'll probably go to Facebook and be like, like the ghost, the dick-suck curse. Anyway, <laughs> if you like this page, I'll appear and suck your dick. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> he, what, what's the goal? What's the point? Like, other ghosts are like, find my body and re save my soul. I want to get to heaven. And this guy's just like, I'll suck your dick. I don't know. <laughs> I don't mind purgatory as long as I can blow some dudes. <laughs> <laughs> what is like? I would be. I would feel real awkward. But I always leave that bathroom quickly because I don't want the ghost to appear. <laughs> because I wouldn't know. Uh, do I take my pants off or do you just suck it through the pants? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably not any good. It's probably just like misty. <laughs> it just feels. You know what it probably feels like? Like when you walk into a spider web and you're like, ugh. Uh, uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, that's wrong what a ghost blowjob feels like. It's like something, but also nothing at the same time. <laughs> that's so funny. Sucking dicks. I just can't get over the ghost sucking the... the he, you all, see, the thing is, is that you just have to wait long enough. Like, there's a reason that normally when you summon a ghost, there's a ritual, and you have to, like, have black cat hairs in a pentagram and burn parchment. Like, it's supposed to be hard. That's so that the ghost doesn't mistake your diarrhea for, like, a seance. <laughs> because that would be awkward for him if he shows up and he's like, I'm here to suck. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> thought you wanted me to suck your dick. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Didn't realize you just were at the runs. Do you still want... Okay. All right. That's cool. It's all right. I'll just back away into the mirror. <laughs> I like to think that he comes out of the mirror. Or maybe he doesn't come out. Maybe he just appears in the mirror and he's like, Okay, just mash your penis on the mirror. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's okay to stick your dick through the mirror, dude. Trust me. <laughs> it won't suck your soul out your penis. <laughs> and the best part is, to me, the best part is that he adds bro on the end <laughs> to, like, add a sense of familiarity, maybe. I don't know. Like, <laughs> he sounds like a... <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like a child molester, like trying to be hip. Like, won't you come get some candy at my place, bro? <laughs> Let's just hang out in my basement, bro. <laughs> it's so weird. Just real nonchalant, bro. Come on, bro. All right, that's it. Thanks, you guys. Uh, have a good night. Oh, <laughs> um, I would like to say that uh, you should go on Facebook and find Cafe DM Comedy. Night, Cafe Diem Comedy Night, and uh, like it on Facebook, and then I'll send you invites and let you know when shows are, and uh, we're, we bring comedians in from out of town, too, sometimes. So, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Bill, I forgot to say when introducing you that I love your stand-up, and I wish that I could see you come out to more rooms. I wish you could see more in Richmond. Keep coming out, man. You're awesome. Give it up for him. <laughs> That's right. This next comic coming to the stage, uh, he used to run Comedy at Current, which is unfortunately now defunct. It was a great room, but we still have a great man, Paul Bass, prepare to be hit on. Uh, Clay Schiff, you son of a bitch. Give Clay a round of applause, come on. All right, this, this isn't part of the act. This isn't a joke. Men, when you go to this bathroom back here, when you're done, do me a favor, keep the door slightly ajar. You don't gotta keep it wide open. If you get the shit, that's understandable. Keep it slightly ajar. Let me know nobody's in there. I have, what, I was waiting for 15 minutes. I'm not a, I can't knock on, if there's a guy in the bathroom, I refuse to knock on the door. Because I don't want somebody knocking on the door when I'm in there. And I'm out for 15 minutes, I'm like, who the fuck is in here? And it turns out nobody was in there. Because it was shut all the way! That's all I asked. Alright, on with this. Who's that Tecate? I'm not gonna drink that, I'm just fucking. <laughs> Clay, I'm desperate as well. You need money, I need beer. Please, somebody donate. Alright, let's get to this shit. I was, uh, it was some time ago, but I was dating a girl who, uh, this is gonna sound very cliche, but she. Uh, she just talked a lot. There's just a lot of talking going on. Anytime we're on the phone, just yeah, 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 yeah. So much that I would roofie her after we had sex. <laughs> oh yeah, we'd be done. I'm like, oh yeah. And she's like, you know what? I think tomorrow maybe we should go to the store and buy some. Like, hold on, hold on, girl, hold on, girl. You want a glass of water? Uh, it is, uh, it's summertime, it is, it is still, uh, it's still wife beater season. It is wife beater season. Yes, wife beater season. If you don't believe me, drive to the south side. <laughs> it is just, it's like a cornfield of wife beaters. And it's funny that we said, you got a, uh, you, you didn't have a wife beater on underneath that show. Kind of, I don't know. Can you see the lesson? You gotta wipe it on something, goddammit. 
there is a, a the thing to me about the white beater is that it's still called that. It's like it's it's mainstream now that name, white beater. You know what I'm saying? Like I know it's not for oh, I guys to be the white. Oh, that's funny. But now the most conservative church going white woman says to her husband on Sunday, "Honey, if you're gonna wear that suit, you might want to put a white beater on it." <laughs> that name is so horrible. And it's the only piece of clothing that gets that distinction. You never see it, but hey man, I like that crack it if you shirt. Great time to slam those dishes! <laughs> hey buddy, I like those child molester socks! Sorry, go ahead, go ahead and slam them. Go ahead and slam them. <laughs> what? Dude, get this out of here. I almost, I thought about sipping that. My instincts were to sit that to Kate. As soon as I went back to the dress, I hold up, that's not mine. I've been drinking it all night, but that is not mine. Alright, let's talk about, um, let's talk about, uh, porn. Uh, porn? Anybody, fellas, honest enough to say, you yeah, right there? Only honest man. You can wave your finger. You can clap, buddy. It's okay. We're not gonna judge you. Alright. Big porn watcher, this guy right here. I, uh, more specifically, I like lesbian porn. You better believe it, my friend. I, I like a, uh, just to give you what I like, I like a younger, I've never done this before, lesbian, and an older, more experienced, everything is going to be all right, child. Lesbian. <laughs> and if one or more of them are Asian, oh, fellas, can I get an amen? Hey. Hallelujah. <laughs> but, I do have a problem with lesbian porn. I love it. But I got a few problems. I got a problem when, uh, I can't say it, every time I'm watching lesbian porn and it is going good, you know, I'm getting like, yeah, I'm liking this, and then they break out the dildo. Oh, I hate the dildo! I watch, look lesbians, I'm watching you for your penis-free programming. <laughs> and then you break out this multicolored mechanical cock. Hey, all right, and every now and then, they'll have like a, a strap on, and one of the girls, will go down on it, which is strange. <laughs> and she'll start moaning on it, like, I'm like, what is, why, why are you moaning? Was, it, was that dipped in salsa? <laughs> you have not seen it? But the craziest thing is, the girl with the strap on dildo, she's moaning! What?! I was like, what, what? that doesn't make any, and I realized, wait a second, she's the dildo whisperer. She's the dildo whisperer. Another thing I don't like about porn, <laughs> and I don't like about this, I don't like about this. I don't like, in that lesbian porn, but just like, you know, regular guy and girl, I cannot stand when there's condoms in porn. You know when the guy puts a condom on? Oh, come on! What, do you watch when the guy puts a condom on? What do you do? You keep going? Ah, uh, stop! I see a condom going on, I'm like, on to the next video! On to the next video, fuck that shit! But this is what I'm noticing, I have watched a few to the end, and this is what happens. The guy takes off the condom and he finishes in her mouth. That happens all the time. If you don't watch those porns all the way through, I have. And that's what happens. All right, all right, so the guy's wearing a condom. So basically the girl's saying, I don't mind swallowing your poisonous seed. I don't mind, you can, you know what? Don't put that in my vagina, but it can't go through my digestive vital organs. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm Paul Bass. It's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> Paul Bass, ladies and gentlemen. Paul. The, o the only reason I uh, implied that you might hit on people is because you introduced me one time and implied that I might, in fact, be a serial killer. <laughs> Neither of which are entirely untrue. 